it's recording. All right, guys. So since we're all stuck at home for the next four months because of this dang virus, I figure you know what, we're gonna do a reptile room tour. Um, just to, to show you guys where we're at right now. So we're gonna go in and take a look see. Got some brand new lights, LED bulbs. Boom! It's bright. All right guys, so here's how the reptile room stands at the moment. Um, if it were a normal year, which it has been far from a normal year so far, we're only three months in, um, I would be saying there's gonna be a lot of changes to this reptile room, but right now I'm not too sure. It all depends on how long I will be stuck in this house. Um, all right, so from the last last reptile room tour to now, there are some animals that are missing. I will touch that touch on that in a previous in the previous in the next video. It's been a long two days. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and get started. So right here, we have a box turtle setup, double deck the tourist table. Made this myself. Um, so up here we have some box turtles. Down here we have a box turtle, and right here. We have a fire extinguisher. Now this actually has a story. Now I'll touch on this, on the story on this, on why this is here when we get over there. Um, but this is a working fire extinguisher. Boom, right there. So you come on up here. Here is the first batch of Eastern box turtles. We got two males, two females in here. All of them are adults. Um, the water, it looks dirty. It, you can't really tell. It's clear and clean water. I changed it yesterday. So there's just some sediment on the bottom from all the turtles dragging it in there. But, um, yeah. So here they are. We have four box turtles. Um, here we have Cleo, one of the originals out of my entire group of box turtles. We got Mr. P, a.k.a. Mr. Perfect. He's a male. Got him. Uh, he's... He was kind of in the middle when it comes to when I got all these turtles. Um, he's called Mr. Perfect because all my other turtles either have an extra scoot on their shell, a scar, something that it's like a imperfection per se. And you know, like advanced keeper's eyes, hey, step on her neck. But his shell is like perfect. Here we have Elda. She is honestly one of my favorites. She is a very old female Eastern box turtle absolutely love this girl she's so old that her shell is very smooth like if you look at mr p's shell or like even this guy's shell um you can see the growth rings on it you can see all around here the growth rings and it's got like a texture her shell is completely smooth that's how old she is then right here i'm um, not gonna lie this dude has a name but i forgot it he's one of the newer ones i got him with another female um but he is, he is doing great. This male is a, he's a pretty cool male. He's textbook box turtle. So pretty much it for him. I know he's got a name guys. And I just, I'm sorry. I forgot his name. I didn't name him, which is why I forgot it. Any animal that I've named, I remember. So this is these four guys and you can take a look at their setup. Got a heat and a UVB, the heat ball burnout, so I have to go run and get that before all the stores shut down. Got a, a half log hide right here. Got a little ramp to get into the water area. We have this ceramic pipe right here that I found in my woods, and they love to go in there. And we have this really cool like root thing that I found in my woods as well. Uh, the dirt here, it's a mix between um, eco earth and natural wasn't natural it's like natural peat moss and i mix it and i keep it keep it really moist and it came out of this big tank here which we'll touch on in just a second um so they have about three and a half inches to four inches of dirt that they can bury under so they're doing great so under here got another setup this is turbo the eastern box turtle he's a male he's the first eastern box turtle out of this entire group um, i got him off from a family that was keeping him. They couldn't care for him anymore, so he's doing great here. Oh, I had to sneeze. Sorry. <coughs> Shoo! <laughs> I don't have. I don't have it. I promise. It was just a sneeze. Um. So 
He's his heat lamp. He's got a heat lamp, but he doesn't have a UVB because it burned out. So gotta go get one of them too. The water area I cleaned and uh, replaced yesterday. So I need to go ahead and do that after the video. It's a little dirty right now because he's dragging, tracking all that dirt in there. But same dirt setup. Um, about two and a half, three inches of dirt in here. I mean, he's got. This is too small for him to go under, but he can climb over it. He likes to go under this here cinder block. Got some logs in here and a random cactus just because, you know, what the heck. So there's Turbo. He's by himself because he's super mean. He's the meanest box turtle I've ever had. And he cannot be in with any other box turtle unless it's in the outdoor pen, which is really big if there's enough space for all the turtles to hide. But when it comes to being indoors, he can't be in with any of the other turtles. It's a female. He's super like, he's super aggressive when it comes to breeding. And then when it comes to male, it doesn't matter. Like he will fight literally any male possible. Um, so he's kind of mean. He's got like a bunch of dirt on his face. What the heck? But it's interesting though. I keep males together just fine. And they have like a hierarchy of box turtles. So like we'll touch on another one, but he, he thinks he's the dominant male. He kind of gets whipped every time. Like, when he's outside, him and Tiki, my actual dominant male, will fight, and Tiki wins every single time. It happens, like, once or twice when I first put them out there in the spring, and then over the summer, they, you know, establish dominance and stuff. So, when he's indoors, he thinks he's the top dog, but he's actually not. Um, so, right here, we have one of the most, or one of the more impressive setups. This is a 300-gallon stock tank. Um, for those of you wondering, I got this stock tank at Tractor Supply Co. And it's where you can find a stock tank if you want one. Uh, this setup houses three species, has three Reeves turtles, a male eastern box turtle, and a little common musk turtle. Um, so we're going to kind of go through uh, this tank here, this setup. Um, big shout out to the guy who suggested peat mulch, or I'm sorry, cypress mulch. I was having some some troubles keeping the water area clean, and I had Pete. Oh look, here's the musk turtle, right there. I was afraid we wouldn't go to see him, but there he is. Um, he was actually hibernating. He just came out of hibernation. Just came, or sorry, brumation. Just came out of a three and a half month brumation, which is really cool. But there's the musk musk turtle. Um, there's a, a reef turtle, one of the females, the smaller female. I don't know if you heard that. It's the smaller female reef turtle. Um, so this tank, oh man, I don't know where to start. So I had, uh, organic, uh, it was organic peat moss and organic topsoil mix. And that was the land area of this paludarium, if you want to call it that. And I would, it would take hours to completely change the water out and put new in and get it looking this good. And then literally within 24 hours, it, it was like mud. It was like a mud pit. So I was like, man, I, I got to do something. So I asked for your guys' help. And what I did was over here, I have about three and a half to four inches of the peat moss topsoil mix. I have a really thin layer, like half inch thin layer of pea gravel. And then about two inches of cypress mulch. And it's, I've had this set up for, for the past few months. No problems. I just get the net and I scoop out any mulch that's fallen in the, the water and put it back in the land area. And it stays this clean and it's great. The filtration system we have here, I'm sure this has interested some of my viewers. We have a, I believe it was a 500 gallon um, pump right here. We got a 500 gallon pump, which has a nice little light over there, which shines up into this tub. Pump pumps the water up through here into this little trickle tower as they say it is a modified like shelving unit which has like it kind of looks dirty in there it has um like this stuff this like real thin like fleece like stuff and it filters through that goes into here you have some pothos plants and some moss in this little tub as well which helps filter it out as well and uh and then it drips down through here so it won't be too loud it won't be like a pouring noise it kind of flows and this helps catch a lot of that debris you can see how well it works so I'll be changing this here as well have a heater in the water 
Keeps it a nice 79 to 80 degree temp. Perfect for the Reese turtles. Um, I'm going to be stocking this little tub with some fish uh, whenever I can. Um, I want to breed fish in here because the turtles can't eat them from in here. So then, you know, once they start reproducing and they fill this tub up, I can put them in with like my alligator snapper or like some of the other turtles around here as food. So, Trickle Tower, uh, this was kind of an experiment and it's working pretty well. So, I'm really happy with it and we'll probably keep adding to this um, in the future. So, this is about 70 gallons of water. I measured it when I put, when I was filling it up. So, nice little water area, keeps it nice and clean. We got some slate right here, just to kind of cover the lip. Here we have the bigger female Reeves turtle. This is Chunks Jr. She's she's such a cool turtle. Like she's so social, and I don't care what people say. Technically, on paper, Reeves turtles are aquatic turtles. On paper, you'll set them up normally as any other aquatic turtle, but in my experience with Reeves turtles, they just absolutely love the land area they will go on this land area and chill out and go under the logs and you know dig in the mulch and everything look at her i mean look at how inquisitive she is and then over here we have two more turtles we have a little male reeves turtle this is keanu keanu reeves uh this is yeah this is a, a male reeves just a little guy he's pretty dark too um, he's got some stuck shed on his face, but there he is. And then we have, he's going in the water. Here we have Bear, a male eastern box turtle. He's in here just because at the moment, um, I didn't have any open space to put him in with the other box turtles. So I put him in here and he's been in here for five and a half months. And he's doing great. He, he loves this setup, man. He absolutely loves it. But this turtle is honestly one of my favorites. I, he's such a cool guy. I mean, he's got really cool colors. Eastern box turtle male. And here's Chunks Jr. I'm hoping to breed the Reeves turtles here uh, whenever they feel like they want to get to that. Um, I, I love this setup. We have a Repti Fogger attached. You know what? I'm going to turn this on so by the time the video is over, you can see, like, you can right here, it's pouring out the fog. Because the cypress mulch isn't the best at holding in humidity, I attach this Repi Fogger here and turn it on a couple times a week to bump the humidity up in here in this this setup for the reuse turtles. Um, this here is my my favorite setup. I think it's so cool. Um, I love the trickle tower. I love the, the plants and the turtles. They truly thrive in this setup I have for them. Very proud of the setup. Also, for you guys, for your wondering, Bear, the Eastern Box Turtle, he has his own water bowl right here, which he uses quite frequently. As you can see, I change it out. Nice little water bowl for him, so he doesn't have to go in here. But, um, yeah, really cool. Here we have a 55-gallon tank for a pink belly side neck and for Theodore, the pink belly snapper. Just got this setup done um, just a few days ago, so it's looking pretty crisp, crisp setup. Um, so Theodore, the pink boy snapper, which is this guy, and then we have his name Jerry. Here we have Jerry, the pink boy side neck. Um, both really, really cool turtles. They were in my room, but then I got the gator snapper, and he kind of took his tank, or he, he took their tank. A uh, simple setup, 55 gallon tank filled with about 40 gallons of water, you know, roughly. 100 gallon canister floater right here. This bad boy, Cascade 1000. Love the Cascade brand. Um, simple, medium size Repi Dock from Zoomed. And uh, it's pretty self explanatory setup. It does well for them. I like the, the setup. I'll probably be adding fish here pretty soon, and then when it comes to be summer, when they are outside, I'll probably put fish in here and just let them reproduce the entire summer. So by by next winter, I'll have like a whole surplus of fish. 
because I am going broke from buying Molly's and Patty's. Because they are expensive. So yeah, get a good shot of him. This is all, one of my favorite aquatic turtles. Theodore, Pink Valley Snapper. I believe they were first described in 2015, so they are very new to the pet trade. I'm absolutely blessed to have this guy. I love Pink Valley Snappers, and I absolutely love the way that their colors just, i it's just so cool. I love the the detail on their head. Pink Valley Sidenecks are really cool too, but I love the, the rigid look of the Pink Valley Snapper, which by the way, is not a snapping turtle. It is a sideneck species. They're called Pink Valley Snappers because, and he's done this before, they'll snap their neck up and splash water on you, and it's like a defense mechanism. And uh, that's why they're called Pink Valley Snappers. They don't, they're not snapping turtles. That's, they're not snappers as in they bite, they're snappers as in they snap their neck. Like, yeah, you, you guys get it. So here we have a 180 gallon stock tank. In here we have like a, a surplus of turtles. We have two 100 gallon canister filters. Right here we have this guy right here. It has a UV sterilizer on it. You can turn that on and off. You can see right here. And that kills off algae. This is good up to 100 gallons. I believe the brand is like Sun Sun, Sun Co or something like that. Then we have another Cascade 1000 canister filter. Um, in here, you know, pretty simple setup. In here we have Hurricane, my female Mississippi map turtle, my absolute OG of all my turtles. I've had her for seven years. Got her when she was hatching about that big. Um, but like all jokes aside, she was as much of a hatchling as you can get. Had her for seven years, she laid eggs this year. Here we have Cooper, my male peninsula cooter. I've had him since he was a hatchling, he's about six. Got Shadow here, my female northern diamondback terrapin. I've had her since she was about well, since she was a hatch, and I've had her about six years as well. And then somewhere in here, if I can find them, the water's pretty deep. We have a pink belly side neck right here. Another pink belly side neck. I can't keep the other one, th them two together because they fight. So I have to separate the side necks. And then in here we have two yellow belly sliders, which I'll be finding homes for. And then a female uh, eastern spiny soft shell, which... I don't know if I can find her. You know what? We're going in, guys. I'm about to grab my scoop gear. We're going in. I push these turtles aside. I gotta find this soft shell. You guys gotta see her. Look how deep the water is. Oh, she's not right there. Here's Shadow. She's absolutely gorgeous. I love this turtle. Got Cooper. Look at his, look at that shell, perfect condition. All these turtles I've hand raised and yeah. Let's look up the dock. I see them. Here we got the uh can go side neck. I got the two pink boys side necks together. Oh I see her. I don't know if I'm going to grab her. She's so fast. Okay. Dang. Are you seeing this right now? You guys don't realize how fast soft shells are. Look, watch this. Okay, here she is. <laughs> Every time. Look, look at that. I swear, guys. Look at, okay, she's over here. You see her right there. She's pretty big. She's actually the biggest turtle in there right now. She's only, only going to get bigger, but look at that. It's like a little circular bite right there. It's like bleeding a little bit. But, um... Here we have one of the yellow bellies. I got two yellow bellies for free this past summer, and I kept them in the pond, and they've got some size on them. And I had the intentions of rehoming them. Um, I just wanted to make sure that they were doing well before I did that. So they'll be going to their their new home shortly when I find a new home. Thing I that turtle bites me all the time. And then we have a second yellow belly. Right here. So as you can see, all these turtles are doing healthy. All these turtles are doing great. They all eat. And uh, they all go outside. Every single one of these turtles goes outside during the summer in their very own really big pond. You know what? 
I'm gonna try, try to grab Darwin again. Nope, nope, nope. Ah, dang it. All right, we're gonna we're gonna leave her. I think you you got the idea. She's she's spicy. Got a little circular bite from her again. Okay, moving right along. You didn't see that, All right? Here we have the last batch, per se, of Eastern box turtles. Two males, two females, and these guys, the ones in here are like fox turtles. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and get started. Again, the water, as you can see, it's clean water. It's just, there's this like dirt on the bottom, which makes it look dirty. I changed it yesterday, I have to change it again today. Here we got Tiki. This is the dominant male. Look how he's like puffing himself up. Dominant male, Tiki. I got him with Cleo, one of the first turtles uh, of these this year group. Um, I also have to miss their substrate. Under here we have one of my absolute favorite turtles. This is Frostbite. I got him with Elda. Frostbite, I love the way his shell is and look how light colored his scutes are. I mean, his scales on his forearms. When I got him, they were almost pure white but now they're turning orange because I'm assuming he has he has better care than what he had previously. Because he was living inside of a kiddie pool with three other or two other turtles. So, um, yeah, now he's turning orange. I'm assuming it's because he has better care, better lighting and stuff. <clears throat> Here we have Brooke, female Eastern, uh, second biggest of the females. Got her with Mr. P. Love these turtles. She's... She will eat anything. Like, some of my box turtles are picky. Some of them won't eat their greens. She eats anything. She is a little piggy. And then here we have good old Penny. She is the biggest Eastern box turtle in the group and possibly the biggest Eastern box turtle in the world. Just kidding. Uh, she, but she is a pretty big box turtle. Um, I got her from Jonah Bottle. I'll link to his channel in the description below. I traded him a tank for this turtle. And she's doing absolutely great. I'm going to check it for eggs real quick. No eggs. Which is perfectly fine. Nice big box turtle. I love her to death. She has a personality like no other box turtle. Um, but yeah, these these four guys are, are great. Now all the box turtles, they go together in an outdoor pen. The goal of these box turtles is to create a, like a, a Stearns colony almost. I want to try to breed them and then give the, the hatchlings to the public to buy. Um, I've successfully bred a few. I've hatched four eggs, but unfortunately the, the, the babies did not make it. So hopefully we'll get more and I'll be able to learn about how to care for those little babies better. Um, but yeah, so these guys also, none of these box turtles I got from the wild. I had the permit for these box turtles these box rolls are pit tagged, microchipped, all of them. And the Department of Natural Resources knows I have these turtles. I have the receipt and the address to every single person I bought one of these turtles from. It's all legal. A wildlife officer came to my house and inspected all my box turtles, inspected the receipts, inspected my, you know, where I got them and everything like that. I got the go, got the pass, I got my permit. It's hanging on my door up by my room. So before I get any comments about that, I am 100% legal with all my Eastern box turtles. So now that, that is out of the way, we have the final inhabitant of the reptile room. This is Scully, the beast, Slicata tortoise. All right guys, <laughs> all right, no, I'm just kidding. Um, so here's Scully. I got this tortoise purely for the fact that I really wanted a bigger tortoise. I really wanted a bigger turtle. You know, I wanted something that I could have walk around in the room, and she certainly does do that. I let her walk around quite frequently. She loves to walk around. Um, 10.0 UVB, 150 watt heat lamp, and you got a nice light here. She has about four inches of soil over there. As you can see, she's moved it around quite a bit, and a few inches of soil right here. You see, it's pretty deep. Same mixture as the box turtles. Um, so she she does that. 
quite well. And this is her feeding tile. And for those of you wondering, she gets her water. I have to soak her three to four times a week. So she gets her correct water. She's got some, some saliva or something coming out. Here she is. She's a big girl. Take a look at her, her plastron. The pyramiding is a little bit on these top scoots here, but not nothing too, too major. Um, had some health troubles with this tortoise right when I got her, but so far she's doing all right. So yeah, that's Scully, she's my pet. She's kind of like my pet of all the turtles. Uh, she gets more like attention. Not, not attention, but more like, you know, she, like all these turtles, they stay in their enclosures. She gets to come out and she kind of gets like special privileges. Um, that's kind of why I bought her. Um, so that's pretty much it. Take a look at the stock tank here. See the, the fog and how it's doing. Um, but yeah. I don't know if you guys saw her. There she is, the smaller female Reeves turtle. She's kind of shy. Um, but yeah, so put her back there. So that is this reptile room. I have a small reptile room upstairs. And Keanu here is trying to trying to get up on land. But um, yeah. If you want to check it out, I have a small reptile room upstairs. Uh, just a few turtles, a couple turtles, a few geckos. You know, nothing too exciting. I have a baby alligator snapper and another baby northern diamondback terrapin, as well as five crested geckos, which I all highlight in that video. Link in the description below. Make sure to check it out. Um, if you're new to my channel, Shud Reptiles, make sure to check out my other videos because if you like this video, then I know for a fact there will be another video that you will like. So you just might you might you might as well subscribe. All right, you might as well subscribe. Make sure to like this video. Comment down below what you think of my reptile room and my turtles. I, would you consider this a reptile room? Because the only thing in here are turtles, a, tort a, a tortoise. So I thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you had a great day. And I will see you guys next time.